this design okay which i've downloaded from the internet and this is the link to download which uh, which i will be including in this video and uh, once you've downloaded this link you need to put it into photoshop and change the canvas size into square so when i brought in the image the image is rectangular in shape so open the image go to image canvas size and change the pixels all right so that the widest pixels is 1352 by 1352 apply and then save okay so i've already done that beforehand so that we can start to do our modeling so first i need to bring in the image reference to model the uh, happy meal box so shift right mouse click create a polyplane so the default polyplane is already square in shape so the texture should fit this perfectly without having to adjust the uh, or normalize the UV mapping. So I'm going to apply a new material. I'm going to use a surface shader material and then click on the image node under the out color, click on file, click on the folder icon and select the happy meal box uh, texture. Right, so press number six on your viewport so that you can see the texture. So right now, uh, what I want, I want to do is to uh, model the box based on the front panel of this box so i'm going to switch over to the top view right i'm going to select this uh, this plane and i'm going to move it and i'm going to just rotate the image plane until the base right now you can see the base is uh, tilted so i'm going to hit rotate rotate it until it is lined up uh, the baseline here is lined up with the uh, grid line here okay so I'm going to freeze the transformation so edit other or rather modify freeze transformations and then I'm going to rotate this I'm going to switch back to perspective view rotate this 90 degrees and then I'm going to use this as a modeling reference for my Happy Meal box. So I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, uh, this plane. So I'm going to go to channel box, X, rotate this. And then I'm going to push this up until the base is lined up with the grid. And this is good enough for me to model the, uh, the side of the panel first. So I'm going to press shift, right mouse click, create. Okay, deselect first, shift right mouse click, create polygon cube. And I'm going to apply a new material to this polygon cube for the time being, a uh, Lambert material. Give it a slight color and give it some transparency so it can see through the reference. Okay, so I can see the front of the reference very easily. I'm just going to push this so that it's about the center. So the thick line co covers the M here. Then I'm going to select this box, this cube. Um, I think I'm going to scale it up first until the bottom of the width matches the box like that. Okay, then I'm going to switch over to vertex mode, select these top row of vertices and then move it up to here using scale I'm going to scale it until it's wide enough okay so right now I'm just going to extrude another section on top here so that I can form the top section of the uh, the box now now the box is going to be folded up and it's going to be slanting forwards so I have to make sure I don't extrude it up too much so I'm going to open up another view I'm going to split this panels into two, two planes side by side so I can switch one of them into a perspective view. Okay, and then pressing number six to show it. Okay, so now I can see the top side very clearly. Right mouse click, go to face mode. Select this top face holding down the shift. Right mouse click, extrude face and pull out the face. Now, because we know the face is going to bend downwards okay this face is going to bend downwards until it reaches here we are not going to extrude all the way here 
we are just going to extrude right about here to following the height of the box around here. Okay, so we're just going to extrude about this section here. Okay, then there is the top of the box. Okay, so I'm going to turn. Okay, I'm going to click elsewhere to get out. Turn this side, select the top part of the box using scale, and then I'm going to scale it inwards, and that will form the top of our Happy Meal box. Right next, I want to extrude the section to form the letter M. Okay, so uh, I'm going to extrude it in such a way that I'm going to connect these two together. So rather than working uh, on I mean working on two halves at the same time, I'm going to cut this exactly into half. So I'm going to use the insert edge loop to cut this box straight here. So right mouse click, choose the edge selection mode, hover one of the selected one one of the edges, hold down holding down the shift, right mouse click, and choose the insert edge loop tool and hover over over the option box. Then you should be able to get the tool settings. Click on the tool settings multiple edge loops and switch over to one. When you do this and using the equal multiplier and when you click to cut the edge loop, you will cut precisely half of the box. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm going to reset the tool on my insert edge loop back to its original settings. Then I'm going to press Q and I'm going to get rid of half, half of the box. So select half of the faces and delete it away. And then I'm going to use Duplicate Special, Edit, Duplicate Special, click on the Option box. And in this case, the orientation for my box is uh, X, okay, it's lined up to the X axis. So I'm going to create a negative X axis. So the scale here is X, Y, and Z. So I'm over here going to put negative 1, leaving everything else it is. And the geometry type is an instant, so Duplicate Special. So we got two exact halves. So right now I'm going to move the reference and move it down until the M touches the top here. Okay, so this is where we are going to extrude the M sections. Now I'm going to ignore this flap here and I'm just going to uh, extrude the uh, M to follow uh, the structure here. So now since I only got one, one section here, I'm going to insert one edge loop here, two edge loops here. So using my edge loop tool again, so go over to edge, hover over any of the edges, holding down the shift, right mouse click, and then choose insert edge loop tool. And because we already reset it back to the original settings, we can insert edge and slide, insert edge and slide, insert edge and slide. So now we have enough sections to pull out the M. So press Q, right, to go back to selection mode, go to face, and select the two top faces, here. Okay, I'm going to close this window so you guys can see more detail. So now the two top faces above is selected and also I'm going to the material attributes and make it much more solid. So these two are now selected holding down the shift right mouse click and extrude the face and you can pull the face up vertically. Now if you want to be sure that you're pulling up according to the world axis you can click on this switch here but since I know my face is perpendicular, I can just pull out one section here like that. Right, so far so good. Okay, I can press G again to pull out another section. Okay, until I end up with a section like this. Okay, now I'm going to switch over to vertex mode. Grab these vertices and rotate in the side view. And just go to move. And for this one, Going to rotate this way, pulling it down here, scale it wide, and for these vertices, I'm going to move it until they touch one another. Okay, these two halves are going to be welded together anyway. So now, uh, because when I extrude these two halves, they are going to be internal faces inside here. So I'm going to temporarily hide the instance instance half by putting it in a layer. Put it in a layer and then just hide it. And I'm going to get rid of the internal face. Okay, then I'm going to unhide okay, the other half again. 
So selecting this face and this face, I'm going to extrude both faces again. Okay, so right now I have sufficient faces to join the two halves together. So I'm going to switch over to vertex mode, select these through two groups of vertices and rotate it this way. And this one, rotate it this way. Oops, it should be rotating based on the view. Okay, so we're almost there. So I just adjust it a little bit more. Now, select these two faces and delete them. Okay, go over to edge mode and select the open, open mouse, holding down the shift to select the opposite side. Shift, double click. So now both the open mouse are selected, or open borders are selected. Holding down the shift, right mouse click, and choose bridge. Okay, and we do not want so many divisions. So going over to the the bridge options, right? I'm going to hover the cursor over the division text, left mouse clicks and drag until it is zero. So now I've got a pretty close uh, model. Okay, I'm going to press Q and I'm just going to just tweak. Okay, I'm going to deselect the back plane. In fact, I'm just going to put this reference in another layer and put it under as reference so I don't select it anymore. So now switching over to vertex, I'm going to tweak the vertices until I get the M. Okay, so this flat, I'm just going to ignore it. Okay, I'm just going to use this entire hole as the uh, reference for, for the carrying handles of the box. Okay, so um, the box is pretty much done and uh, perhaps I might need to tighten it a little bit but for now I'm just going to leave it as it is and I'm going to join these two halves together Okay, going to mesh combine mesh combine and then I need to stitch the central vertices together Okay, for now I don't need the reference anymore, I can hide it so go to vertex, go to the front view and select the central vertices. Okay, you can use scale to scale it a few times in the x-axis to force the vertices to sit on top of each other. Then go to edit mesh and merge. So right now the central vertices should be merged together and we are ready to do our UV mapping to map the box, okay, to apply the texture. So I'm going to the material attributes and going to okay, the uh, material settings, material attributes again, and I'm going to make it solid. Then the color, I'm going to click on the node and I'm going to bring in the file. And I'm going to use the Happy Meal box as a template. And you will notice that right now the texture doesn't appear correctly on the box. And we need to do some UV mapping to uh, get it to appear correctly. So I'm going to show you step by step how to do that. So first you need to open up your UV texture editor. And UV texture editor can be uh, opened only in modeling mode. So click on UV. UV editor. So to see the UVs, you need to select on the box so that you can see the how the UVs is being applied here. And in one of the buttons here, if now if any of the buttons are hidden, right, you can click on these bars here. If there's an arrow, you can click on it to review more of the tools here. Okay, so this button allows you to toggle to show between the texture and uh, and also the button just below it. You can dim it so they can see how the UVs are being laid out right now. Because this originally was a cube, there was a UV layout for this cube. And this entire thing is called a shell. All right. And there are two shells uh, now they are sitting on top of each other. So let me just demonstrate. There is this second button here when you click and 
choose on it, you can move the shell to the other part. And whenever you move it, right, the projection will show up on the texture itself. But we need to fix the projection so that it matches the size of the um, of the box correctly. So first, we need to get rid of this UV information by clicking on polygons and delete UVs. So we need to select the entire object. Say what did was select the entire object because right now I only deleted the UVs for those selected faces. So select the uh, select the box, then go to polygons and delete UV. So right now this box does not have any UVs assigned to it. So now starting from the front view, make sure you're in the front orthographic view and not perspective view. Make sure you're in the front and then we are going to create a UV projection. So first, we want to project the side faces. Holding down to shift, you can select the side faces. Or you can use the paint selection to paint select the faces. Now, whenever you select, make sure you only select the faces that you want to project. Okay, so I'm going to go to the other side. Okay, and make sure that only the faces that I want to select is selected. Okay, so just to be sure, right? So only these faces are selected. Okay, and in order to make this clear, I think I'm going to tap the space bar so only this view is selected. Okay, so now these bottom faces, or rather the broadside faces, are selected, and I'm going to map it to uh, the one of the broadside faces here. So to project the UV, you click on UV planar projection and click on the option box and choose the camera option and project now when you project right it's going to use up the entire uv space and using this manipulator you can scale it down scale it down and then you can move it over the faces that represent the side so you can click on this blue line here to rotate and then you can scale it down scale the sides until it matches the UVs now in this exercise um, it's quite straightforward because we have the texture already done for you now in typical UV mapping you have to lay out all the shells in this case we created a uv projection shell and then you have to export the pattern and then paint the textures in photoshop but uh, we are sort of doing this uv mapping in a reverse manner uh, because we have this nicely laid out uh, cardboard uh, texture so now we want to do the uv texture for this top section here so i'm going to select the face select the top faces here and then I'm going to project again and this time I'm going to scale this down until it fits the top section of the of the box here this section here and you'll have to rotate until it lines up so this takes a little bit of tweaking Okay, so now there are several tools available for you to actually join these two shells together because these two shells are in fact connected together in 3D space. Although the projection uh, sort of looks alright, but if you look over here, there is some offset going on here. So we're going to stitch these two uh, shells together. So we're going to use a tool here. It looks like a needle with a thread going through. Click on it, okay, and then move over the edges that you want to stitch together and just paint over it and then now they are stitched together okay once they are stitched together you can right mouse click go to oh sorry press q followed by right mouse click go to uvs and select the uv point and manually move this now make sure 
you select the UVs and not the vertex when you're doing this step. Okay, so I can select this entire row of UVs and I can use this tool to straighten it up. Then I can just manually rotate it to the angle that I want and move it to match the orientation of the texture. So now I got one side of the box nicely textured. If I go to the perspective view and this looks pretty good. So now I'm going to uh, texture map the other side. So I'm going to the back view. Back view, back view. There you go. And select the faces. I'm going to select the bottom half of the faces first. And then go UV and planar projection. Now again, remember you must use the orthographic cameras and not the perspective camera. So I've created another new shell. Now I'm going to scale it down and move it to the other side. Okay, I'm going to rotate it until it's lined up and scale it down. Put it right in the center here to match the Okay, match the, the shape of the shell. So once I'm done, I can just uh, press Q, right, to uh, go to selection mode. So I go back to the 3D box and selecting the faces that I want to project. And I'm going to UV project the planar surface again. And again, scale this down and move it to the appropriate shell. So click on the rotation, control. Okay, I'm going to rotate this until it lines up, scale it down, and we're going to use our stitch tool again to stitch the two shells together. So right now, they are slightly overlapping each other. Okay, you want to try to get it as straight as possible and make sure there's no gap between them, otherwise there will be stretching in the texture. So now using the needle and thread tool which is to sew the shells together I'm going to just drag okay left mouse click and drag and now they are stitched together okay and I'm going to press Q to select right mouse click go to UV select the top UVs use scale to scale it up okay so that it follows the orientation of the mapping so now I got both sides of the Happy Meal box done. Now I'm going to do the other two sides. So I'm going to switch to the right view now and select this face and project my UVs again using the planar. I'm going to scale this down and I'm going to use uh, maybe this one. Okay, again, rotate using the rotate uh, handle. Scale this down and then move this left and right until it fits. Okay, I think it's pretty much uh, around there. Uh, perhaps I just want to bring this until it lines up. And the rest, I can simply move the UVs, so right mouse click, go to UVs, grab this UV point, since it's just a single UV point, move it down here, and then this one down here, and this one down here. Okay, you have to be very careful not to move the textures too much, and otherwise you'll see some uh, distortion going on here so okay I'm going to undo the movement of the tip there okay and then just move this okay I think this is good enough I do not want to distort this further now I'm gonna move to the other side okay here 
So, so this one should be the left side, all right. So the left side, then I'm going to do a UV projection, planar projection. Remember using the camera, scale this shell down. Rotate the manipulator. Grab the scale uh, controllers until it matches the the width. Right. So I'm going to go to switch into UVs now. Select these UV and position it to match the. shell okay for these two I'm not going to move it too much because I do not want the distortion to happen on the checker pattern here so far we've done the side so what's left is with the yellow M's so I'm going to just do this very quickly I'm just going to switch the front view and then I'm going to drag a box over the faces including the ones in the back right so now all the faces are selected I'm going to go to the front view and then go to UV, planar projection. And then I'm just simply going to place them over a box, right, with all the yellow color. And then I have completed texture mapping my Happy Meal box. Okay, so this is the quick and easy way to texture map your uh, Happy Meal box and if I render this it should look pretty alright if I switch to mental ray and, and it should look pretty good so this is how you uh, texture map so remember when you texture map uh, like this this is called laying out or UV layout the UV shells and normally you will go to polygons and you export the layout under UV snapshot you bring it into Photoshop and then you paint the textures so what we are doing now is doing it in reverse but uh, I think this is much easier for you guys to understand how uh, UV mapping works in Maya okay I hope you enjoy this tutorial and please try this out yourself and uh, so that you can understand the concepts of UV mapping